So there was just a presidential election in Ukraine, and a comedian won. Well, that's fascinating. Take a look. When comedian Volodymyr Zelensky announced um, at midnight on New Year's Eve that he was running to be president of Ukraine, many pundits dismissed the move as a public relations stunt. Zelensky, 41, is a household name in Ukraine. Until recently, he starred in a hit television series as a corruption-averse history teacher who is elected the country's leader. Now, the man who has no political experience and few clear policies appears to be on the verge of replacing the real-life incumbent. Campaigning on little more than his charisma and a desire for change, he won the first round of the country's presidential election last week. Most opinion polls suggest he will beat President Petro Poroshenko by a considerable margin in the April 21st runoff. He indeed did do that. Zelensky appears set to follow the trend of candidates and parties around the world who are coming out of nowhere to topple establishment figures. Although the most notable is Donald Trump's presidential win in 2016, quickly morphing from a businessman and, a, and reality TV host to leader of the free world, there are plenty of other examples. The Five Star Movement, Italy's largest ruling party, was founded by comedian and blogger Beppe Grio and Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti, um, was an unknown lawyer before his appointment. Uh, Zuzana Kaputova, who was just elected Slovakia's first female president, was also an activist lawyer and a political outsider. And even French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, despite being involved in politics for some years, shocked Europe when he ousted the traditional parties with his and March movement in 2017. So he was also from outside the establishment in the sense that his party was like a nothing fringe party, and then, it, you know, he won. Um, and then they go on to say that social media has been key in allowing these interlopers to gain notoriety that would have been impossible even a decade ago when traditional media acted as a de facto gatekeeper for most hopeful upstarts. That's interesting. And I couldn't help but think um, about new media in relation to this, because think about it. Like, what what TV network would have hired me if it wasn't for, you know, me being able to just kind of start this up on my own, turn on a microphone, and start talking? Here's the answer. None of them would have hired me. Unless I had put on an act to try to be, you know, Mr. Button Down, and I'm going to tell you guys about what's happening with the news and the weather today, and first let's look at sports. The only way I would have been hired is if I pretended to be all buttoned down and official, and I wasn't like myself. But the thing that made this show popular is that I was able to be myself. So there's a little bit of a catch-22 that in order to su uh, succeed and rise the ranks in traditional media, you have to put on an act. Because if, if, if you're a little too real... You're a little too rough around the edges. You talk a little too much with your hands. You curse a little too much. Your opinions are a little out of the mainstream uh, in terms of what's acceptable in the establishment. Well, then you're not going to get anywhere. You're not get, get, going to get your foot in the door. No way. So um, social media is really kind of changing the world in this way. Now, also, I'm now of the belief we have to change our... like. The old school, the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s idea was... Oh, well, in order for you to get elected to, like, the highest office in the land, you got to have experience. Like, experience is something that is needed, it's necessary, it's a positive thing, it's something that everybody's looking for in candidates. Now conventional wisdom needs to change. Why? Because the recent evidence shows that it should change. And now, I propose the conventional wisdom should be, the more of an outsider you are, the better. So, in other words, if you have experience, people will hold that against you. Why? Why will people hold that against you? Because the system's been fucking screwing everybody from the beginning, and then you're going to make the argument, I, sir, was a part of this system the entire time. Well, if you were part of this system the entire time, that's a problem now, isn't it? Because I don't like this system, bitch. So it, there was a time where saying, oh, I have experience, was a positive thing. We are no longer in that time. It is no longer 1985 or 1992. People hate the system. So it's better to be an outsider than an insider.
better to say, yeah, I've never been in that fucking cesspool. I'm going to go there and clean it up. You can't say, I am in the cesspool, and therefore, vote for me. No, nobody's going to want to do that. And then also, the final point is this, man. This is how broken the establishment is. The establishment is so broken that, like... Basically, any outsider message resonates more than somebody from inside the system. Any outsider message, even if it's vague, even if it's broad, even if it's uh, even if it's accompanied with some negative policies, the outsider appeal. People are willing to roll the dice on. I don't know them outsiders more so than they're willing to go with the devil they know because they say the devil I know is a devil. So. At some point, maybe the the ruling elites will realize that the neoliberal world order is abysmal for average people, and there's a giant uh, revolt going on right now. This is a revolt happening from within the system. And, uh, you know, they better hope that the revolt doesn't graduate to outside of the system, because once you do that, then then you're really in for uh, for the long haul, and you're really in for, you know, a bunch of negative stuff happening that none of us want to see happen. So, the establishment better learn to let go because, you know, for us, for example, if we get Bernie Sanders in there, they're going to try everything to try to prevent Bernie from winning. But if Bernie wins and they block him every step of the way, as they probably will try to do, well, that's when we hit the streets. And that's when we say, this isn't really a question, guys. He won. We like his agenda. He's going to try to implement it. It's time for you to step aside. But this trend is still continuing around the world, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop.